serious? <laughs> Wait, hold on, my audio might be messed up. One second. One sec. One second, I don't know if it's going through. Comments Hello? There we go, okay, sorry. <laughs> Did we run that again? Yeah, okay. Okay. Good morning, Justice Khan, and we're back today with <laughs> Fabian Wagner. Hi, everyone. Let's do uh, intro. Sorry again. about that, guys. <laughs> it was a time for technical difficulties. That's okay. We didn't have any yesterday. Always happens. <laughs> anyway, how are you, Fabian? Thank you for joining us. Very good, very good. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. It's great. It's always, you know, it's a pleasure. So for well, those we're who, honored to have you. Yes. Go on. For those who are tuning in who don't actually know what you do, can you explain what you do? So I'm a I'm I'm a cinematographer. Um, so I uh, I'm in charge of the lighting, the the camera, camera movement, camera, uh, you know, the composition, everything that has to do with with camera and lighting is, is, is what I do. And um, I had the privilege of working with, with Zach on, on Justice League. Was that the first project you've worked on with him? Yeah, yeah it was, yeah, yeah. I've always been, I hadn't uh, met Zach before. I've always been a huge fan of him, obviously. And I've always been a huge fan of Larry Fong, who's Larry, uh, you know, is his usual uh, cinematographer and um, so yeah, it was a, it, that was the first time I, I met him. How did it come about that you started working with Zach? Do I don't know. Him? You know, I'm still I'm still asking myself that question. <laughs> it was very very it was very very lucky, and obviously Zach liked my stuff. I think Zach. Uh, well, I know Zach is a big fan of Game of Thrones, which I've done a lot of seasons of and a lot of the big episodes for. Um, and so one day I just had a phone call from my agent saying that Zack Snyder wants to meet me and it literally made me fall off my chair. <laughs> and I said, okay. And I went to see Zack and, and he was very nice. He was super nice. And I said, Zack, it's great to meet you. And, uh, but I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> and um, he said, well, this is about my new film, Justice League. And so I just couldn't believe it. Anyway, we had a really great chat and, chat and it was really nice. And uh, two weeks later, I got offered a job, which I never expected. So it was just all very uh, crazy and surreal and just amazing. And uh, obviously, he he had, you know, his usual team around him, which are all just amazing people. Um, Misha, who was his first, and uh, Patrick, his production designer, and Michael, costume, and uh, DJ doing visual effects. And, there are people that he's worked with for a long time and it was just amazing to sort of come into that group of people and and, and work with all of them really. Can so, you yeah, tell I drove us to work anything? for about the Oops, first sorry. I drove to work for about the first forty days thinking this is not real. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you were a DC fan coming into it, so you were still like <laughs> Can you tell us anything about your time on set? How was that? Oh, it was just amazing. It was just, it was just such a great job. You know, was, I mean, everything always comes down from the from the top, and and Zach is just such an amazing uh, guy. He's he's just he is just the nicest, yeah, nicest guy. And you know, he's had a lot of success, and he's done a lot of stuff. And he doesn't have to be that nice if he didn't want to, but he just is genuinely a nice guy, and it's just. You know, he was very, you know, he's a very creative person. He's very, obviously knows what he wants, yet at the same time, he was very open to ideas and uh, and my ideas and, and anybody's ideas. And, and I just think that really shows, um, you know, his character so well. And, and for me personally, it was just, you know, I've always been a big, uh, well, I've always especially been a big fan of Batman um, and all the other DCU characters too, but Batman was always sort of my favorite. And so just to be able to stand <laughs> on a set and shoot Batman is pretty awesome. 
you know, so. Um, we have a pretty cool question from the chat. Uh, it says, uh, could you please explain the idea behind the eight camera beam splitter rig used in the Wayne aerospace hangar seat? Thanks. You know, I'd love to be able to explain that crazy idea, <laughs> but I don't think I can. It was just a crazy, crazy idea. You know, it's one of the things that you can do on, on, on big jobs like this. And also it's one of the things that you can do with someone who's as creative and as innovative and supported by such cool people like, you know, for example, DJ uh, Desjada, who's, that, who's doing the visual effects. You know, it takes a lot of departments to make something like that work. And so, you know, it was a big scene of the main characters. Uh, in the hangar, we wanted to keep the camera moving all the time uh, you know and the, to shoot all that conventionally would have taken a long time and we just basically we started with the idea of having where well, we use multiple cameras but then how do we keep it moving we put it on a circular track then how do we keep the continuity and so it just suddenly there was uh, I don't think it was I can't remember if it was eight cameras I think it was six cameras maybe. Um, but it was on two dollies and they were moving around the the action and yeah it was totally mad <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah you know it's just one of those fun things that you do so you were working you said before you've worked on game of thrones so were you like did anything overlap were you like trying to work on both projects at the same time no no i had finished season six i think it was uh battle of the bastards and winds of winter we had I think I had wrapped on that and then I started prep on Justice League and then they had asked me to come back for season seven, but obviously I couldn't do that. Um, I had to turn that down so because we were shooting all year and then I came back for season eight of Thrones um, the year after. So uh, it, all, it, all, it just all worked out really super well. Uh, speaking of Game of Thrones, uh, you mentioned Battle of the Bastards, which is pretty much everyone's favorite wait one second i don't know if the aud is the audio working again what is wrong with this one second i'm sorry hello can you guys say something yeah we can hear you okay can sorry you. Can you i don't fine. know what was wrong with it okay speaking of battle of the bastards um can you kind of tell us what went into that like behind the scenes stuff well you know it's just the same thing with all of these big i mean you know it, we were just really well prepped it was a big obviously a big shoot we were shooting three cameras all the time for 16 days but it was just you know it, it, it it's just well being well prepped and and knowing what you want out of the script to you know to to make it work and then it's all about communicating with all the departments and Obviously, I, I love doing a lot of stuff in camera, and so does Miguel, the director, mm -hmm. who's a good friend of mine. And, and he, you know, we had a lot of ideas about what we wanted to do. And so it's in the end, it's just really prepping it and then understanding what you're going to do and then communicating that to all the other departments so that everybody knows what you're trying to achieve and what you're doing. And so it's all about keeping special effects and visual effects and the stunt guys and the horse guys and the... Mm -hmm. uh, and all the other crew members sort of, you know, on the same track. And then, and then you just shoot, shoot, shoot. <laughs> well, the Battle of the Bastards was, was something that was pretty much, like, never seen before on TV on this scale. Yes. Um, I remember I actually, that's about when I started watching the show. So that was, like, one of the first ones that I've seen that were, like, just as it was coming out. And it did leave an impression, I won't lie. It was amazing. Yes. Oh, that's, um, that's great. That's great. So do you but have so so when you when you're putting this together, you know, you in the creative process, do you like how much input do you usually have? You know, is this is this all you or is it where where does it come from? Like how much input do you have? Particularly say in Game of Thrones or then also in Justice League? No, it's certainly not all me and, and that would be <clears throat> I mean, that would be boring too. It's, you know, the one thing I love about filmmaking is the collaboration with people and, and mm -hmm. working with so many different 
people from all different backgrounds, different genders, different ethnicities. You know, that's that's what I love. I love I love people, and I love getting to know people and work with people. So, to me, that's the most enjoyable thing is being able to collab collaborate. And obviously, there are certain people that you work with who you know don't like that aspect of it that much, and they sort of tell you what they want and and. But now those are the sort of people that I don't really want to work with anymore. To me, it's more about collaborating, whether that's with a director or my camera assistant or my gaffer or anyone, really. I love I love that part of it. So, you know, like, for example, a good, you know, with Miguel, we're good friends and we we really dissect the script and we talk about it. And, and he has his ideas. I've got my ideas. Sometimes they're the same, sometimes they're totally different. And, and then sometimes he says, you know what, I don't like your idea for this bit. And I'm cool with that. And likewise, I can say, I don't like, I think maybe this idea might be better. And he's cool with that. So, and then you just work on that and you sort of... Meet in the middle? Well, meet in the middle. It's almost like you just take the best of both worlds and mm -hmm. put them together. And then that's what you then, you know. So, and that was the same, you know, Zach is very, very meticulous. I mean, he had a, he storyboarded the whole movie, which is amazing. He's, he's an amazing artist, as in he's an amazing, he, his drawings are incredible. And, you know, I remember in the first meeting, he showed me his storyboard book, which obviously then wasn't finished, but it was incredible. It was just incredible, you know, to see it. And, um, and that was one of the great things about it was that he knew this, is what he wanted, but yet at the same time he was super open to me saying hey what do you think about doing this show there or this show there and you know he was really receptive to this and and so and you know to me personally that is what makes filmmaking you know so enjoyable and we're so lucky to be doing what we're doing anyway you know right so it just that really makes it fun and no work really so a question from the chat is asking, how do you feel knowing the cut will be released and everything you worked on will be visible? Well, you know, I mean, I'm just super happy for Zach, you know, um, because I think it's great that someone who, you know, Zach loves the DCU, Zach loves those characters. He knows everything. I mean, he knows everything about those characters, about the backgrounds, where they come from, who they are, what they are. It's amazing, really. Um, it's just nice for any creative, really, to be able to finish something that they've done the way it was created by them, you know? So I'm just, that's, so that's the main thing, is I'm really happy for Zach, I'm happy for Debbie, you know, his wife and producer, I'm happy for everybody else who's worked on it. Um, you know, and obviously I'm happy to see the film that I, when I was there that we were making, so, you know. There's another question in the chat. Um, I, you probably, I don't know if you can answer this, but uh, will you be helping out with any additional photography? I wasn't, no. I, I finished with Zach. We shot for a hundred and something days, I can't remember. And the day uh, we wrapped, we wrapped in LA and that was the wrap of Justice League and I saw Zach a few times afterwards when he was c cutting the first three trailers, which were all cut together from the stuff that we had shot, and we did some grading on those. And uh, and that was it. When they started to do the uh, reshoots, I I was already uh, prepping on another movie, so I was actually not uh, I was I, I wasn't available anyhow. Mm -hmm. So that never came up. Being a lot of questions about the aspect ratio of Justice League, um, could you explain that? And also, how is it uh, filming um, for IMAX? Sure. Well, I mean, I don't want to give too much away because I know that's something that will come out when you see it. But mm -hmm. it was uh, we didn't shoot anamorphic. Is what I'm going to say. <laughs> cool. Um, Zach, Zach wanted to get away from, he wanted to get away from the, he did the last couple of movies anamorphic and he wanted to get away from that and shoot a different aspect ratio. Okay. Uh, it's a, someone in the chat says, now that it's coming out, uh, I'm assuming they mean the cut, what is your most, what are you most excited to see from the cut? 
if you can say. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't think I don't think I can put I can name a single thing. I think I'm just looking forward to see the whole thing. Cool. cool. You know, there's not there's not there's not a single. Be tough to sort of name one certain scene or. Right. Uh, what is it like having to work on uh, shots or scenes that are heavily relying on CGI? Like, how do you go about kind of keeping that out of your mind and just focusing on the shot? Um, just by being Im imaginative, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, I... I, I actually, I actually really, really enjoy CGI. I think if you're working with um, good CG people, it is, it can be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, yes, after 50 days of green screen, you feel a little bit dizzy and strange. <laughs> but, um, but no, I really enjoy it, and I really enjoy the kind of. I enjoy the the work that we do beforehand and talking to the director about the look that they ultimately want to achieve, mm -hmm. uh, f finding that look, then talking to the CGI people and everybody about how it's going to be, and then creating the lighting in an environment that's completely not there. And, you know, obviously doing a lot with interactive lighting and, and all sorts of stuff. I think I, I find that really challenging. I actually find it being being a lot of fun so uh you know enough I've, I've had obviously i've had great experiences with cgi um doing thrones and then doing justice league it's just been you know they, they all are incredible artists you know so it's nice to to uh to work with them mm -hmm. uh, how did you get into cinematography like what made you go into this career uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's something that I kind of. Well, my best friend. I'm German originally. I was born in Munich, and I, my best friend, wanted to be a director. And so we just started shooting like little. We should have started shooting anything that we could really when we were young. You know, eleven, twelve, thirteen. And I think when I was fourteen, I was on the first professional film set, and I saw the camera operator, and I thought that look kind of cool I guess it was just there was nothing more to it back then <laughs> but I always I was drawn to the camera I guess and then I started taking stills and then I was just filming loads when I was a kid you know on, on the Super 8, High 8 everything that was I mean this is like ages ago we didn't have the iPhone or anything so it was all <laughs> but um, so yeah and then I just started to work on short films when I was still in school and as soon as I finished school I just started to work on it full time and and that was it and I never never thought of doing anything else as a Batman fan how did you react to uh, bat seeing Ben Affleck as Batman for the first time S knowing that he was Batman or seeing him on set Seeing him like you know in the mo in the moment like dressed ready to go like Batman is arrived. I probably looked like a little kid. I I, I don't I don't know my <laughs> face, but I remember being on. A, I think the first one of the first scenes we shot was um, the scene with Gordon when he's waiting on the rooftops and 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 the league are coming down, and Batman's on top of the gargoyle and. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. And I was like, yeah, that's just, I just, I remember saying to myself, this is just awesome, just shooting Batman. <laughs> um, and then I had my best friend, my, my, my best friend's uh, son, who, who's about seven. Uh, he's my godson. He came on set one day and, and, and I just remember him standing there and suddenly Superman walked by and, and then Wonder Woman walked by. And then my, and then my sister's kids came on set and they're also my godchildren and they you know it was just and so I, I, I guess I probably had the same kind of face when I saw Batman the first time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, those kids must that's have been really face. shocked. Yeah that's so cool. Yeah you know it's one of, it's one of those things that you know I never uh, you know I love my job and I always love doing I, I, get, I mean I guess sort of bigger and better stuff I don't know 
how to say that, but I never had like, I never said to myself, well, one day I need to shoot like this or that, you know, I never, but then when you're actually suddenly there and you shoot something that's, you know, been around in your life since you were a kid. And obviously when you were a kid, it had a real impact on you, you know, that's pretty cool. So. Okay. Let's see. I've seen, I've seen a question, um, that was a bit earlier, but I kept it, you know. So the question is, um, which location was the most difficult to work on for you that you can recall? Uh, I would say maybe the bat cave I thought was quite tricky. Okay. It was a cool, really cool set, but um, very intricate set. You know, I mean, the set. The sets in general were super amazing. You know, Patrick is uh, such a great designer and just incredible size and, and, and beautiful sets and colors and shapes and, and so much detail. Um, yeah, the Batcave I found quite. So like the Iceland shot, uh, shots with uh, Aquaman and Bruce was pretty, wasn't too hard. Like given that it was like supposed to be cold. <laughs> It was supposed, and it was quite cold. And I was very hungover that day. <laughs> it made it even worse. <laughs> but I wasn't the only one who was hungover. <laughs> uh, but no, they were they were not that. I mean, it was hard for Jason because he had to go in the water. Mm -hmm. That water was really cold. But uh, but no, we, no, no. That was that was that was that was really nice. We were just in a super nice location. You know, we were we had really lucky with the weather, and it was just um, that was a real fun few days of shooting. Um, let's see. Uh, what are some of your favorite cinematography, and who are some of the cinematographers you look up to? You know, I I always say, and it might be, I don't really have one because there's just so there's so many good ones there's so many good cinematographers there's so many there's so many good films that look bad there's so many bad films that look good mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's so much in between that there isn't to me there isn't one or two or three single people there's there's just so many so i never like to put a name to it because it would be unfair to all the other cinematographers that I, you know, admire, so, sorry. No, it's okay. it's okay, it's okay. So this might be, you can feel free to tell us you don't want to answer, but a lot of people want to know how did you feel seeing the theatrical release? You know, to be honest, I, what was more, way more important to me than that was the fact that Zach had to leave the movie for a really, really horrible, yeah. tragic incident, you know, and uh, so that was kind of the thing that overshadowed everything all the time to me, so, you know, and obviously the movie that we saw was not the movie that Zach had intended to make, mm -hmm. um, and that's no one's fault, it's just the fact that Zach had to leave for something that was way, way, way more important than a movie and couldn't finish it. And so, but there you go, everything happens for a reason. He's now being able to finish it, so. Another question I That's saw, important. If Zach, like in a perfect world, if Zach gets to make more, like gets to make the, his next film for DCEU or like Justice League 2, what have you, would you be open to working with him again? <laughs> Do I have to answer that question? Yes, of course I would. I would love to work with him. It was just one of the most amazing experiences, and he's just so. Yeah, I learned so much from him. But you know, I'm also being very, very uh, realistic, and I am. Um, you know, there's a lot of great DPs out there. Larry Fong is one of them, and he's his usual DP. And so, you know, the reason why I came to the Justice League was because Larry wasn't available because he was on a different movie. And, and the schedules were clashing, which happens sometimes. But, you know, Larry and Zach have a super, 
visually have an incredible relationship and I'll be, I was trying my best to sort of step into those shoes uh, and it was great fun and I'm very grateful for that and if it ever happens again I mean look I'm going to be there no doubt but you know I'm not going to be sad if it doesn't happen because I know that there's people like Larry who've worked with Zach for a long long time so we actually spoke briefly with Larry. He wanted to make sure that um, that we had uh, gotten in touch with you about. Yeah, no, that's nice. He we emailed. We emailed. Uh, I have a question about color grading. Uh, it says, "Talk us through the process of color grading and what goes into it. What is the process of color grading uh, for something like superheroes versus Game of Thrones?" Uh. Well, the process is generally always the same. You know, the the, the purpose of color grading is the purpose of color grading is like your final sound mix. You know, it's like you 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 get everything together and you you take the film into the direction that you want it to be, and you create the look as much as you can on set with the design and the colors and um, I mean whatever you choose to use. It's 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 a combination of you know, costume makeup, the camera you're using, the uh, the lenses you're using, the filters you're using, the the set design, the production design, the all of that comes together. All of that work is something that you do collaborative, collaboratively while you're shooting. And then, in the in the in the time, the color timing, you basically just take it all and you make sh you I would say probably enhance that look that you've created on set. Or push it into a certain direction, and um, make sure that everything matches. You know, so it, it's the same process whether you go, whether you work with superheroes or whether you work with Jon Snow. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So out of like so, uh, other than Batman on the gargoyle statue, what was your fa like that? You can tell us without giving too much away. What was your favorite scene to shoot in Justice League? What I really enjoyed shooting was um, the the bat the bat hanger set. Mm -hmm. That was a really cool, really cool, amazing set that Patrick and his guys built, and it was really great fun to light that set. And we were in there for quite a while shooting a lot of scenes, and there was a lot of talky scenes with Gal and and uh, and and Ben and, and all the other guys. And that was really, I really enjoyed that set just because it was a real challenge to ride that place. Um, and I really loved, I loved shooting the uh, the under, what's it called, under the big bridge underneath uh, Gotham when they first see, see when they've taken the hostages and they free the hostages. Mm. That was also a very cool set. Uh, that was a great set to, to light and to shoot. Um, and then one of the most fun days was uh, shooting shooting uh, Jason, shooting Aquaman, walking down the, <laughs> dropping off the fisherman and then walking down the, the pier. And it was such a great day, you know, it was my focus puller, Jamie Phillips, who's, who's been my focus puller for 12, uh, 13 years. He, He's one of my best friends, and he's an amazing focus puller. And he, I try and take him on every job that's where that's possible. And he was with me on Justice League, thank God. And um, I just remember we turned up that morning, and you know we we had both done some bigger stuff, but nothing of the size of Justice League. And we were bo we both turned up that that morning, and there was this. We had built this massive pier, in this field and a small village with lots of houses. And there was water machines everywhere to create the water oh, effects. The splash. The big splashes. Mm -hmm. And we had the we had the boat on like a gimbal with water splashing. And we shot the, the fishermen in, in distress on the high seas. And, and we both turned up and we looked at each other and said, wow, <laughs> now this is it. We're on a big movie, man. We're on a big movie. This yeah. is cool. How does it feel like working on these projects and seeing your scenes like become iconic for that character? Because like that shot you just described, you just described of Aquaman is literally like 
if you look on on any website for a GIF, that is the first thing you see. Like that has became the iconic DCEU aqua. Oh, really? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's it's been. I mean, it was like I, I believe it was shown in the first trailer, and mm -hmm. yeah, even though it. even even though it was changed for the theatrical version, the the version that was in the trailer is the one that's popular. Not surprisingly, and it, it's you know it it's very iconic. Like it's the it's I I believe that for a lot of people, when you say Aquaman in live action, that's like the first scene that comes to their mind. Honestly, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, it was great. I mean, it was look, it was great fun to shoot. Uh, and I mean, that's nice. You know, I'm not I'm not looking that much on the internet, so I don't really know what's going on that much. <laughs> but obviously, it's always it's always nice when you've been involved with something that people really love. Like, you know, you probably know about the whole backlash that happened after season eight of Game of Thrones yes. and episode three that I shot, which was supposedly be too dark for some people. And then, <laughs> you know. I was in the end, I could just be right to say, "Look, guys, I, I'm a big Game of Thrones fan myself. I love Game of Thrones, and I certainly didn't want to make any. I didn't want to spoil it for anyone, right? You know, because people think, mm -hmm. oh, he's just in that to make us angry, and it's, it's just so ridiculous.' So no, it always feels nice when, uh, when obviously people like, you know, when you can create something that people love. So that's, I mean, that's ultimately who you're doing it for. You're doing it for, um. You know, you're doing it for the fans and you're doing it for the people who love watching that particular show. And so it's great that, you know, that's why that's the main reason why I'm so happy that Zach is getting to do his cut. And it's amazing that, you know, it's all, it was all driven by the fans, you know. Yeah. Um, I have a question mm -hmm. here. Um, which films did you and Zach use as reference while shooting Justice League, if any? None. None. Okay. Good. <laughs> I actually can't remember one film that we talked about. So um, I'm, we I, might have done, but to be honest, I can't right now. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. This one sounds like fun. So you're. Uh, what? Hang on. Sorry, it scrolled away. What did uh, you think of the Amazon fight scene? Like filming that kind of fight sequence. Oh yeah, that was cool. I loved that. That was. Um, you know, we were shooting. We were on the. I mean, we had a lot of stages. We had one stage where we had put it, the whole stage was covered in earth, and we had real horses. We had a, few, a stage where we just had a few strips of um, earth with some real horses. Then we had the robotic horses um, for doing all the stunt stuff. That was really. That was really cool. Yeah, that was. That was. I mean, you know, that sequence was shot over months. You know, a day here, a day there, a couple of days then. Um, but yeah, that was really, that was great. All those, all those scenes were really, really good fun. Perfect. Uh, this, this is a opinion based, but what's your favorite Zack Snyder movie? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. This I always mean, stumps everybody. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, certainly, certainly, uh, Certainly, um, so, uh, I think 300 had a massive impact on me when I was, because when was that? 300 was 2001, maybe, or something? I think 2003. 2003, yeah. so I was, just, I was just in film school. I was about to finish film school. And that had a massive impact on me, like, creatively, because I thought it's just amazing. You know, for, for, for Zach and Larry, to to create something like that that became so iconic and to create a whole new way of shooting something that is so visceral and so visual, I thought that was incredible. And that so that had a big impact on me from that perspective. But actually the one film of his that I liked the most, I think just as a oh, whole you. piece with Thank you. Sorry? Sorry. With, so the chat is correcting us. It was two thousand six. So thank you guys. 2006, okay, thanks. God, I thought it was earlier. Um, so I was at film school then and I was shooting really bad corporate videos back then. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. I was shooting really bad corporate videos then and I was about to do my first gig as a, as a main DP on a, on a TV drama. 
Um, so that had a big, so that had a big impact for that. But actually, my favourite film of his, because I love the characters and I, I thought just it's so funky and crazy and great was Watchmen. I think that's my favourite of his, which is probably a bit controversial. <laughs> I know it didn't go you down know, that way. You well know, anywhere, I love but... Watchmen. Watchmen's my thing all the way, so I completely understand. <laughs> I wanted to ask, um, since, you know, we had the question a bit earlier about, you know, you and Zach being potentially inspired by anything for Justice League, I wanted to ask, is there is there like a person or someone's work that you are personally inspired by, someone that you look up to in regards, you know, to your, your own job, like someone who's up there that you just like sort of like an idol kind of thing? No. No. <laughs> no. I'll tell you why as well. So, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of people's work that I ad admire or or love or sort of look up to or kind of, you know, inspires you and stuff. And that ranges from whether it might be still photography or paintings or films or... You know, it's it's influenced by uh, many many different uh, strands of art, so it's not one particular thing. But I've never ever, I think I never ever felt like I wanted to look up at someone like that because you wanted to because do your... maybe because I didn't want to. You know, I, I don't know. That's a really tough. That's a really tough question. I just don't. No, I don't have anyone that I look at like an idol. You know, I think everyone's so different. Everyone does their own thing. And if I said, "Oh, I wanted to be like Roger Deakins," I'm never going to be like Roger Deakins, right? Roger's Roger, and that's that. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to be like that. He does amazing stuff. There's no doubt. His stuff is incredible. But you know, so I think it's just you, you've got to do your own thing and and. You know, I'm I'm light years away from Roger's talent, but um, but you know, as long I think as long as you're happy with your own stuff and you try and learn and improve and get better and do different things, I think that's you know that's what keeps me going. And that's what I love doing. So, a lot of people want to know more about the history lesson scene. You, um. They want to know, like, how, what, how, like, what went into filming that, and could, if possible, could you say it was it short or long? Well, I, you know, it is a long time ago that we shot it, so it's, I, it's actually hard to remember exactly. The we we shot we shot a lot of elements for the history lesson. And I've once said before in some interview that, you know, the one thing about Zach that, one other thing about Zach that I think makes him such a great director is that he takes his time with his cuts. If his film needs to be three and a half hours long, that's what he does. And of course, if you then try and cut it down to two hours, it's going to be a very different movie. So he makes his films the length that they should be for what they are. And so probably what I can say with with not being able to remember exactly how long we shot and how much, but we did shoot a lot of elements for the history lesson and I'm sure that you could make it into a quite substantial long sequence. Beautiful. Um, some people want to know, like, is there any music you listen to? to get like when you need a kick for inspiration when you need to get in the zone like do you have any music you like to listen to for that yeah i love i love music music is a huge part of my sort of daily life and and work life too i love i love music i, I a lot of the time listen to music on my headphones while we're lighting or you know in one ear i always listen to music um and it's all different stuff it's nothing, nothing um, particular. I, I really like all kinds of music. I love country. I love country, but I also love heavy metal, and I also love Leonard Cohen. Leonard Cohen is one of my favorite musician of all time. So it's a it's a very strange mix if you look at my uh, playlist. 
Yeah, why not? I mean, you know. Uh, what's the um, main difference between shooting for television and shooting for movies? Uh, nothing anymore, I think. I mean, uh, you know, I I always find that question really hard to answer because I've always, I've done both and I've never really approached them any differently. I've always approached every job the same way, no matter it was small, big, TV, film, small film, big film. Um, I've always approached every project the same way. And sure, on something like Justice League, you have the comfort of having a little bit more time, but you also have ma massive sets. You have a lot of different elements that you have to address and, and lots of people to work with. So that takes naturally more time. So, but yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, uh, I've never seen a difference personally. And, and, and nowadays, I think, with the TV stuff that's being made and the quality of TV stuff that we have now, um, I, I, I would find it really hard to find a, find a difference. I mean, I remember shooting my first film, which was like a 30 million, 40 million budget picture. And I thought, great, this is the first time I'm at I have a bit of time. I can, you know, if I say I need five more minutes to like the set, they'll be like, okay, cool, you've got ten. <laughs> and then we were shooting it, and I was going like, this is crazy. I'm shooting as fast as I was doing on Sherlock a year before, and it was, you know, so. Uh, do you have any upcoming projects you can tell us about? Uh, I, yeah, I do, but I can't really talk about them right now because... I'm actually not quite sure what I'm, <laughs> what I'm going to decide, what I'm going to, decide oh, okay. to do. I've really enjoyed my time during this lockdown with my family. I just had a baby. She's just a year old, so it was really nice to be home. Congratulations. That's wonderful. Yeah, thank you. So we just spent a lot of time together. And I do feel, I do, I am looking forward to, you know, shooting something again. Um, but likewise, I'm like, yeah, but if I have to go to work, then I won't see the baby five days a week. So, oh. and my wife. So, True. we'll see. But there, yeah, no, there's a few things. There's a few things around, and um, there's a couple of really interesting, um, couple of really interesting, interesting projects. And actually, I've been looking for something that's got no CGI whatsoever, no green screen, <laughs> something that's very character driven. Going to change very, it up a bit. Very small, just couple of good actors and you know so we'll see we'll see so uh when it comes to filming the scenes with the flash like what were any challenges that you had with that one since everything happens on this when you when it gets to the movie it's all sped up like what kind of challenges did you face with that one that was interesting that was a very interesting challenge and it took a lot of time for us to work it out and 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 again i can only say that dj for example was an amazing collaborator because obviously you know you really have to find that look and set that look before you shoot it and so we were working very closely together with the visual effects and everyone to to figure out of how to do that and not only was it the flash speed and how quick does flash move but then suddenly you had superman in the mix and superman obviously then moves faster than flash so and so we were shooting film, 35 mil, and we were figuring out what frame rates do we have to shoot the flash on. And then obviously the higher frame rate you shoot, the more light you need. Um, and then we were shooting some high speed, um, you know, Zack Snyder style, you know, a thousand frames. And so then you need even more light. And so it was all of that. Um, and it's great because it, it's, it's very creative stuff which is then driven by technical aspects and stuff. So you have to figure all of that out. But, but yeah, it was just a process that you sort of naturally go through. And, and, and once we figured out how we want to do it, then it was just a matter of sort of saying, OK, we film the flash at that certain speed. I can't remember what we, what we did. And then we do Superman at the speed. And, and then you're just, thankfully, these days, you know, it's, all, it's a little bit easier with LED lighting because you can actually change the the lights and, and the speed of the lighting effects 
much quicker without losing color temperature. So all of that makes it easier. So it was just working that out and testing that a little bit. You know, doing, we were doing some tests and then mm -hmm. um, and then showed it to everyone. And then, you know, when everyone said this, this works, then that's what we did. I see a lot of questions that are sort of on the same side. Um, and that is questions about the underwater scenes for Atlantis. Um, so if you could talk a bit about that and maybe, you know, what challenges that posed and, you know, was that harder than the Flash and, and Superman scenes or which one was like harder to do, the speed is put up scenes or the underwater ones? Well, it neither was hard, but it was more like a, you know, it's just figuring out how you want to do it. So obviously we had quite a lot of underwater stuff to do, which you didn't want to do underwater. So they wanted to create that underwater world in CG, which was a massive, massive, massive challenge, obviously. And then so it was, to me, it was about how do you, what does the light look like underwater? So obviously because the water is moving, so the light breaks into multiple um, fragments. And so the, the light's moving. So we used, for example, we, we used those rock and roll lights called Bad Boys, which you use for big concerts um that that could do certain patterns you know so and then come with the color that, that i used but um so it was just trying to figure out that and then it was how do we make jason look like he's swimming so we put him onto this fork which was a fork basically which was operated by green people <laughs> really hard to find in, in the uk they're you know, you know easy to find in the uk but we found a few and they and they were operating the fork and the and so it was just and it's really good fun because you kind of you have the stunt department you have the visual effects and you've got the special effects and you all sort of go like okay so if we put jason on this fork and then move him around like this it looks like he's swimming and he can swivel in there so he's really like swimming and then we have put the camera on a crane and we can do that movement and then with the moving light and so it's just sort of you creating la layer and layer and layer and and so, it, you know, I, I enjoy those kind of things because, I think, because again, it comes down to collaborating with people and, and, and finding an idea that hopefully works. Beautiful. Um, some, I've seen a lot of questions about the color grading in the third act. I'm not sure if you can <laughs> divulge into that or not. <laughs> I can't, I can't really because we never got to really talking about what that final grade is going to be right. when we were shooting. Um, uh, we had a certain idea, but it wasn't sort of set in, uh, set in stone. So uh, the extreme color that it had when I saw it in the theatrical version was not what I expected. But I'm actually, to be honest, right now, uh, because obviously we haven't done the color grade yet for for the Snyder Cut. I'm not quite sure yet okay. what that will be. Cool. Um, Probably more Zach than than the previous one was. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm sure that <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna be the case. What was the biggest scene like that you guys had to shoot? Like what the one that was like the biggest to produce? and put together and whatnot. Well, I mean, obviously the end fight was pretty big, but I think probably the biggest was the fight in the middle when they first meet Steppenwolf and they, they're they under the city. Oh, okay. Uh, and, they fight, and, they, and they free the hostages and they're fighting on the bridge and Gal falls down after the sword and stuff. That was a big sequence that was, you know, that was that was a really big set with like two or three different layers and and, and there was a lot going on. So that was probably. Is it another question about third act? Was it supposed to be daylight or at night? If you can tell. Do you remember? <laughs> and can you tell? I actually can't remember what it was meant to be. What is it in the film that in the theatrical? I don't know. Yeah, well, well, in, well, in theatrical, I don't even know if you it, could it actually say that. It's just red. 
it, it's orange. Oh, orange. <laughs> orange. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Part yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't, I actually can't remember what it was meant to be. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Do you have a favorite memory from working on this, on Justice League? That you can share without giving away too much. No, like I said, I mean, you know, literally. Well, yes, I met my wife on that film. Aww. Aww. That's probably my favorite memory. <laughs> That's so sweet. And from a shooting perspective, uh, well, it would have to be that day on the rooftops when when we when Batman's up on the gargoyle because that was just such an iconic shot, and I just loved shooting that. That was like. When I was standing at the bat light and the bat light was switched on, you're like, wow, this is the bat light. <laughs> so that was probably, that probably is still, that probably was my favorite thing. Yeah. So you met your wife on set. So like, how did, how did that go? Did you guys, like, was she working uh, on set as well? Yeah, yeah, she was working on set. She's, she's a makeup artist. And so... It, it was love at first sight. <laughs> <laughs> That's Didn't so take sweet. Much Meg, what happened? I know. <laughs> it's just a mess it's okay, today. It's okay. We'll fix it later. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, what else questions do we have here? Uh, okay, da, da, da. that's not really... How did you shoot the shot of Gal following, falling and the Flash uh, pushing the sword towards her? Why? No, like, how did it go? Like, what, what was it challenging? Was it difficult? Well, again, I mean, I wouldn't call any of it difficult. <laughs> uh, so we're making, we're making movies and we are, uh, you know, we're not saving lives. We have a very comfortable, nice job. We're very lucky to be doing what we're doing. So I wouldn't call any of it difficult. I would call it maybe challenging a little bit because of the loads of different elements you have to shoot. Um, you, and and that was particularly, I guess, challenging because there were so many elements. So you had to obviously had had Gal falling, you had the flash running around, you had all the lighting effects of the flash, you had the different film speeds for shooting her, the flash, the surrounding, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So. But yes, it wasn't difficult. It was just once, once you sort of know, okay, well, Gal is falling down. We film her at, I don't know, 250 frames, and then we shoot the flash in whatever frames. And then, you know, okay, how do we shoot him running? So we just put him onto a tre tre treadmill, treadmill, hmm. and he's running, and we're doing this. And then, so it's just putting them, those elements together. And, you know, you could, like I said, it's like element, element, element. And then when you put them together, you create that sequence. But the hard thing is, and it's not hard, but the that thing is to work out all these different elements and how they have to be done to to work together. There's a question uh, for his story lesson. Uh, did you take any inspiration from 300 or is it more Lord of the Rings style? Ooh. I mean, I, I would say, I would say neither. Probably subconsciously, definitely more three hundred because it felt mm -hmm. much more like a three hundred sequence. Um, but then I wanted it to be not quite as stylized as three hundred. But yeah, it definitely wasn't Lord of the Rings. It definitely, it definitely wasn't that. Thing. Um. This is interesting. How would you describe Look of Justice League compared to Man of Steel and Batman v Superman? I can't because I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> That's true. true. Perfect answer. Perfect answer. <laughs> but I think they're all very different. I think they're all going to be very different. Cool. You know, I think I think BVS is different to Man of Steel, and I think that's a good thing. Yeah. And I think JL is going to be different. Do you ever get um, get nervous working with animals or what have you? Like, with any challenges that, that they could uh, present? 
Yeah, animals are always difficult to work with because, I mean, I don't, you know, I'm an animal lover. I love animals, and I always find it very hard to to film animals. You know, I've seen a few things happen that aren't very nice and not on purpose, but it just it's what happen, can happen sometimes. And so I've always taken great care of when filming with animals that everything is safe and, 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 and good for the animals. So um, we had no incidents in Justice League, thankfully, and we had no incidents in Game of Thrones, thankfully, as well, which is surprising because obviously we had a lot of horses and, and, and horse yeah. crashes and, and clashes and everything. Um, but yeah, thankfully we haven't. No, but I mean, Horses are always, uh, animals are challenging because they move in their own way and pace and 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 so it, it's, yeah, it's just about how to keep them safe and how to keep the actors safe and... Hmm. What's your, since you're a Game of Thrones fan, I'm seeing people want to know, what is your favorite house from Game of Thrones? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought you were going to say, what's my favorite episode, but I don't. Well, yeah, don't what's your favorite a, episode? You can say I that, too. I don't have a favorite house. I don't have a favorite house. My favorite episode probably would be The, the Red Wedding. Mm. It's a good I one. thought that was pretty... That was pretty traumatizing, good. but beautiful. <laughs> yes. traumatizingly, traumatizingly beautiful, yes. Yes, exactly. It's one of those things you never forget. I just thought, no, I thought, I thought Rob McLaughlin was a... Obviously, uh, we've worked together for a long time now on the show. He's become a friend, and he's, you know, he's one of the DPs, as are the other DPs like Jonathan Freeman and Annette Helmick, um, uh, and the others uh, DPs that I really admire. But he, I thought, he just did an amazing job on that sequence. You know, I've always looked at that, thinking, "Wow, it's so beautifully done." Uh, do you prefer shooting uh, on film or on digital? Or do you not even have a preference? Um, it's, always a, it's always such a tough question. I mean, really, I would say that I don't care what it is as long as I look through the camera and it looks good. I don't care. I think um, digital has become so amazing. Um, what digital cameras can do... Uh, I think it's incredible the 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 opportunities it has opened up with using new cameras with all the lenses, for example. Or I think it's incredible. I do love shooting film. And I was very lucky to early on in my career for the first sort of seven eight years to shoot purely film. Before this whole, or maybe six years before this whole change has come in. Pardon me. I was very lucky to shoot a lot of film. Um, I do love the discipline of shooting a film and, and I do like when I'm operating, I love hearing the sound of the mag rolling through. And there's a certain kind of, uh, you know, for someone like me who's not like, you know, there, there's a lot of DPs who shot film in their lives and they, they know exactly what they do when it comes to exposure and, and everything. And I know a fragment of that, right? Because I, I didn't do it for that long. Um, but I always obviously find it very fascinating. And um, so there's a certain amount of sort of anticipation of, shit, how's it going to look tomorrow when I see the rushes? Mm -hmm. you know, it's a certain bit of something that you don't know. And, and part of that is really cool. Part of that is also really scary. So, But I don't have a preference. No, I love shooting. I love looking through a camera and as long as it looks good I, I'm, I'm not you know I wouldn't turn down a job just because they tell me oh you have to shoot that on digital or you have to shoot that on this you know so you um, like really enjoy like even though the industry is always ev evolving you really enjoy like going with the flow and learning the new tech and what well I think you have to I think you have to always you know this industry is changing the technology is changing hugely every single time and you sort of have to keep up with it to add to what i just said when i said that they i wouldn't turn on a film and if they tell me what to shoot on well the one thing that i really hope that's going to happen in this industry is that us cinematographers and and all the creators are being able to have a bit more input in in what format we, we can use for certain things 
um, rather than being told by production, oh, you have to shoot digital, it would be nice to be able to actually creatively make that decision um, on what it should be. But um, but yeah, no, just to answer what you just said, I think everything is changing hugely all the time, and I think you have to keep up with it, you know. And I mean, I'm a big, I've always loved the Alexa from the moment it came out. The Alexa, I think, is a great camera. I've, uh, and so I've always been, I've been, every time I've been shooting digital, I've been using that most of the time, but I've also used all the other cameras and, and tried them. And, uh, and so, you know, you sort of find your own preference and, and then take that further, I guess. So we are out of time. So is there anything in closing you would like to say? Well, I think I just want to say to everyone, you know, thanks for being here and thanks for having me. And, and also, I think thank you from all of us that, you know, who were involved with Justice League for making such a big uproar that we should see <laughs> the vision that Zach had always intended. And so I, I think it's great. I think it's amazing how the fans have been. And I think it's amazing how that fan base has, has driven this movement so, so much that a few years later, we're sitting here and we know that in a year's time, we're going to see Zach's film. And I think that's really awesome. And so, well, thank guess, you so much thank for you. talk with us. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank <laughs> you.